Hi, I'm William, reporting for the Fun Robotics Network. I'm here at the Southern Cross Regional with 5584 IC Robotics. They have an awesome slanted elevator, an amazing human player intake, and an incredible climb system. Learn about their software all on behind the bumper. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. So going from the start of the season, what was your strategy? So from the start of the season, we knew we wanted to keep it simple, and so we decided to go with a coral-only bot and just to descore uh, de the algae from the reef. So to do coral-only, we knew that we needed an elevator to lift upwards, and hence you can see the angled elevator here. So we chose an angled elevator because it can reach horizontally as well as vertically, meaning our L4 uh, scoring is extremely consistent. So as you can see, it goes up and extends, and it also means that we can remove algae from the reef very consistently. We also knew from the start we needed a deep climb to secure that RP and also get 12 points every single match, so this is our deep climb mechanism. So going from your, starting from your, where you pick up the, the coral into your station, could you explain, uh, explain that? So basically our uh, human player feeds the coral from the uh, coral station into the chute. This chute has motors that was run and then feed it into the end effector where it will get hit by but it will break one of the photoelectric diffuse sensors and start to slow down before hitting the second one and completely stopping for the to align with the to move the elevator up. And then once we are in position, we will raise the elevator up and then feed it all the way through, so the coral will get scored. So yeah. I see, I've seen the, throughout the comp, you've been able to take algae off of the, the reef while you're scoring. How does that overall work? Well, we've got a algae wheel that just sticks out. It's just, at the start of the match, we raise the elevator, it will fling out, and then it will spin with the end effector wheels and hit the algae on, when lined up, and it will just take it out. So an another question is, how do you ensure that uh, the, the coral from the human player station goes into your overall end effector? Um, so we make sure that our coral is in our end effector using these photoelectric diffuse sensors. So we have two. So this top one just slows down our intake and end effector once the coral comes in. And the second one is a stop to stop the end effector once it reaches there. This also makes sure that our elevator doesn't lift too early, as if our top line break is hit, but I'm not our bottom one. We know that the coral might be somewhere in between and it's unsafe to lift our elevator. So moving from uh, your elevator, so how is it overall, how, is it a cascade or is it a continuous uh, type of elevator and why did you choose that? So we chose to do a chain driven cascade elevator this year with two stages and it is driven by two falcons on a four to one ratio. So we chose chain because it's very durable and very re resistant to impacts and such. Um, we did explore continuous elevators, however, we ended up going with the Cascade just because of its position control. This is a really fast and quick elevator, and it's, it makes sense how you can score so fast. Moving on from the, the, the elevator and the intake, how does your overall climber system work, and how reliable and how quickly does that climb go ahead? Um, so we, our climb is uh, an iteration or different, like a different type of every bot climb. Um, it uses a 600 to 1 ratio um, from the Neo Vortex to the rotation on the climb. We also have a latch mechanism, so then after the robot's been deactivated, the elevator can still, um, still stay up. In here, once the climber activates, so normally when the climber is stowed, the latch is pulled back, and then as the climber comes up, the latch comes the latch flicks out, stopping the elevator from going down all the way, even when it's deactivated. Uh, yep. 
So yeah, I know there's obviously a lot of software that goes into this. What are some of those software protections that you've had to implement to try and make sure nothing breaks? Yeah, we have quite a few software safeties on this. Um, namely, I think, is we don't use a single encoder across the whole robot. We use, to zero all of our subsystems, we use current sensing, because we've had a lot of issues with encoders in the past. We also use our line breaks in here to prevent moving the elevator when the coral is either out of place or you know not in the robot. Uh, we also have an anti-tip on the robot. So if our robot tips too far, if we accelerate with the elevator up, the elevator will automatically bring itself back down to so, which stops us from tipping over. It's helped us a lot in a few matches so far. Yeah, it's been good. Another, another question is, what are some of the localization that you guys do to get a consistent, reliable auto? For Vision this year, we run two Arju cams running off a single orange pie in the back of the robot. Um, and we don't run a 3D pipeline this year. We've decided to only do 2D align, which only aligns with the reef in autonomous. For teleoperated, we're entirely driver controlled. We do keep a 3D pose, but it's rare that we use it, and it mostly only exists for autonomous stuff. This is just a really awesome, just incredible design. And the last type of question I have is, uh, I see that you have this uh, aluminium like chassis. Why was it? Why did you choose to go with uh, that one? So from the start of the season, we knew that robots were going to get very tall and there would be lots of tall robot syndrome where robots tend to tip over when they're trying to score on L4. And so we knew we needed to have a very low center of gravity. To do this, we achieved, um, we used a three millimeter aluminium belly pan, which is not pocketed at all. So it's a solid um, belly pan all the way across. And that means our dry base is 23 kilograms, meaning more than half our robot's mass is at the bottom. So this has prevented us from tipping once this season uh, completely. So we've never actually tipped over and it is extremely robust. We've had plenty of impacts and we haven't reached uh, a single, you know, um, issued from that. I, I do have one other question. Is what are some of the further improvements you would want to take to this uh, robot if you advanced? So we've been looking at the strategy and we definitely think that algae will be the separator for uh, future competitions. So we have discussed possibly adding um, a way to capture algae and score it. We've also looked at having automatic alignment uh, using the 3D pose so that the drivers have a much easier time for scoring. Thank you so much for sharing this uh, incredible robot. I can't wait to see how it overall performs here. And uh, thank you very much. This has been 5584 IC Robotics. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.